Okay, for part two, I've tidied up the hand just a little bit, and we're gonna go ahead and start with the transverse carpal ligament. And to do that, we're gonna draw and attach the ligament radially to the scaphoid tubercle and to the crest of the trapezium. But I'm not gonna draw that. I'm not gonna go that far. I'm just gonna draw it right here and know where it attaches. And it attaches on this side, on the hook of the handmate, and the piece of form. But there's a couple of things we want to know about it. It is the continuation of the antibrachial fascia of the forearm. And as it approaches the wrist, it thickens. And it's different from person to person. But that's what's going to form the roof of the carpal tunnel. And then the carpal bones, of course, are the base. And then it continues on to fuse with the mid-palmar fascia. So it's also the origin site of the superficial and intermediate thenar muscles, most of which we've done today. So we have a little picture here. This is Gray's anatomy from 100 years ago. And it's a beautiful picture. OK, so that's the TCL. We're going to come down and draw the tendons at the wrist. tendons, blood vessel, nerve supply. All right, so let's start with the palmaris longus, the underappreciated tendon, which we use for grafts and anchovy procedures. So that's our palmaris longus, and then we're gonna come off to the side to the flexor carpi radialis, which I always think is an interesting treatment challenge because the patients also complain of thumb pain and maybe it's because its insertion path is the base of the second and third metacarpal by way of the trapezium groove and the scaphoid slip. And they just seem to hurt there as well. So it se seems to lengthen the time for them to get better. Right over here we have the flexor digitorum superficialis, which you can see where I've drawn it on here before. And of course this looks nothing like this, but we know that it has four tendons that pass through the tunnel. It looks kind of like an anemone. It makes me smile. Flexor carpi ulnaris is over here. Might have gone too far there. And I think those are the three tendon groups that I did. And then we have some blood supply, right? We have the ulnar artery. And then we also have the radial artery. And then we have our median nerve with the palmar cutaneous branch. And of course, the palmar cutaneous branch does not go through the tunnel, so it's, it's spared during carpal tunnel syndrome. So I have a couple of pictures. I have my picture of my guy here. I know there's a glare, sorry. There you can see how they've accentuated the radial artery, ulnar artery, and then you can see the palmaris longus. And in between, I don't really see my superficialis tendons drawn the way I did them, but here he goes, another good picture. Excellent. All right. Moving along, you guys. So then we're going to move to the dorsum of the hand, and we're going to do the thumb zones. And I've been smudging this up, so I've had to kind of start this tape over. I'm going to try to not smudge so much, but we're going to start with the bones. So there's our thumb bones. Get that to zero in. There we go. And then we're going to draw the zones 
on top of it. So one is the IP joint. Two is the proximal phalanx. Three is the MP joint, right? Four is over the metacarpal. And five is over the wrist. Probably a little lower. And there's our thumb joint our, and tendon zones. And why draw the zones when you can have this picture here? <laughs> it's not as fun to have a black and white picture, right? You've got to draw it out. All right, so that's that. Now we're going to move on to my favorite part, which is the dorsal hood. Try to find a pen that actually works. Okay. So go down to P2 or the base of P2 and I'm going to exaggerate this if this doesn't work I'm going to turn right around and erase this pen okay let's do it in brown and see how that works and we're going to do your central slip it's shorter than this but play along with me okay here's our central slip and then we're going to bring this up to help form our terminal tendon. And then we're going to bring that down because we want to form the EDC. And these are our radial and ulnar lateral bands, right? Okay. So next, let's do the triangular ligament. And now we're going to create the tendinous insertions for the interosseous and lumbricals. Really, Sherry? Okay, so what are we missing? We are missing our sagittal bands, which help to separate these out. And the dorsal interossei actually have two bellies, and so the bands separate that out as well. And what else here? Okay, so what we have is a big trouble spot because the dorsal hood or this mechanism gets stuck when the patients have some sort of trauma and then they can't glide very well. And then they don't understand reverse blocking very well. And there's so many things that can go wrong. We can get a mallet finger. We can get a central slip tear. We can get weakness in the inner ossei. We can get stuck here. There's little grooves that these slide through. You can get saddle syndrome or sagittal bands can get cut. 
So it just the uh, boutonniere deformity, swan neck deformity, lots of different things that can happen and go wrong here. I also have another one drawn out here. There we go. All right. So it's just such a complex little mechanism and it's a little challenging to explain to the patients, you know, why doesn't my finger open up all the way like it should? All right, so that's the dorsal hood. And then we are on to our middle finger. And what we're gonna do here is break every bone that we can to demonstrate our different types of fractures. Oh, I do have a picture. Here's how the dorsal hood looks. It's in my lecture. Wait, I'll tap it to get, there we go. Right. So let's break some bones. <laughs> we're gonna start here and we're gonna draw the bones first before we break them. Okay, at the DIP, let's see if you can see that. It's hard to draw this. I'm gonna create a Tufts fracture. At P2, I'm gonna create an oblique fracture. P3, what are we doing on that? Did P1, a comminuted fracture. I'm just breaking it into four pieces. <laughs> Does that look comminuted enough? And then, oh, an avulsion fracture here. There you go, the bone's fallen away. And then what else have we missed? Oh, a spiral fracture. There's our spiral fracture. And I think I got all of them. Okay, now if you trace the course go straight down, you're gonna fall into a recess here. So I'm gonna clean that up a bit. And redraw it the way it should be. And then on me, see that? Right there, that's my capitate. We're just gonna add him in because he's a big fat carpal bone and he's the center of rotation. C for capitate and center of rotation. Is that better? Okay. And we're gonna stop with part two right there and we will continue on as soon as you go to part three.